Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! They died on the streets of West Belfast in 1971 at the start of the Troubles. Ten people were killed over the course of three days in the wake of an operation by the British Army to detain paramilitary suspects without trial, which prompted widespread street violence. Today, the families of those who were killed in Ballymurphy won their 50-year fight to clear the names of their relatives when a coroner ruled that they had all been entirely innocent. Nine of the dead were shot by soldiers. The coroner said the tenth was either killed by British soldiers or paramilitaries as she criticised the army for using disproportionate force. Our island correspondent Emma Vardy reports. Northern Ireland's past continues to be carried into its present. A fresh inquest into the deaths of the Ballymurphy victims was brought about by their families' campaign. Today marked the culmination of a 50 years search for truth. In 1971, the army went into a housing estate in the Ballymurphy area of West Belfast to arrest and imprison IRA suspects without trial, known as internment. The main target of the present operation is the Irish Republican Army, which has been responsible for recent acts of terrorism and whose victims have included Protestant and Catholic alike. It sparked violent clashes over three days. By the end, ten people lay dead. Among them, a local priest and a mother of eight. Soldiers from the Parachute Regiment, now given anonymity, claimed they opened fire after being attacked by IRA gunmen and rioters. I saw this chap with a petrol bomb in his hand. I opened my cab door and I fired one round from a gun. Oh, it's a submachine gun. Fired it at him. He dropped. You killed him? I think so, yeah. Well, I'm, I know so now. I found out later on. Soldiers at the time said those killed were armed. Their relatives always maintained they were innocent civilians. These were the people who died. Today, the coroner acknowledged the army had come under fire from gunmen in the area, but she concluded in most cases the use of force by the parachute regiment was disproportionate and that all of those killed were entirely innocent of any wrongdoing. Inside court, relatives had applauded as the findings were read out. Overwhelmed. Uh, I'm overwhelmed. I just. That's the best day ever. We <laughs> waited too long. We waited too long for this. You and pray you and you arms. pray and you ask for justice. You got all the detail you were hoping for in, in that verdict? Well, we knew. Yeah. We yeah. always knew. It's just to unbelievable. Hear, to hear the world will yes. know. The world yes. will know now that. Yeah. that yeah. The and the world will know. And they're innocent. They're yeah. innocent. For all along, people would say, oh, they were this and they were that, but now it's all cleared up for us all. Yeah. The findings bring new clarity to one of the most brutal episodes of Northern Ireland's past. For decades, families felt their loved ones' names were tarred. Today, they've been publicly exonerated. Today is a great day for our families, but it's also a bittersweet day. Today, personally, I think of my d dear brother Frank, whose young life was taken by British paratroopers. He gave his life helping others, and as one of our witnesses said, he was very brave. The parachute regiment only had hate in their hearts when they'd gone down, her and the others. They were not peacemakers. They were not brave soldiers. They were nothing but cards. There are hundreds of other killings from the Troubles which remain unresolved. In many areas of Northern Ireland, feelings of loss and injustice have endured through the decades. But for the families of Ballymurphy, now a new sense of vindication. Well, it's been a very significant day for many people who remember the events that happened in this part of Belfast. The Ministry of Defence has said it will reflect on the findings of the inquest, but there are many more inquests to come involving killings from the Troubles. Now, it's understood that the government is still planning to bring in effectively a ban on prosecutions involving paramilitaries and veterans with regards to killings before 1998, but there will be a lot of opposition to that here. Uh, there is still a great depth of feeling when it comes to getting justice for loved ones in Northern Ireland, no matter how much time has passed. Emma Vardy, thank you. Well, welcome to Ballamurphy this evening. I suspect the car sirens you can hear in the background will get louder. A cavalcade of residents here celebrating the news that they've waited, of course, 
nigh on, a few months short of half a century to get the news of the truth, the official truth about what, that, what happened. In those three bloody days on this estate, 40 and more years ago, and almost 40 people probably shot dead by the Parachute Regiment over those days. So the truth has been well and truly delivered. But justice, another question. And all this on the day when the government's Queen's speech hinted at taking measures and legacy issues over those responsible for unlawful killings, and the hint being, of course, that there would be, in effect, an amnesty. So an awful lot to talk about tonight. This is what's been going on in Belfast Coroner's Court today. The marathon march for the truth is over. The families of those killed arriving at the coroner's court in another twist in the saga which parallels Bloody Sunday. The deaths, then the long, long campaign to have their reputations restored of their loved ones. The coroner, Siobhan Keegan, needed about two and a half hours to deliver the truth. The families of those killed and injured needed half a century. The key finding all the deceased were entirely innocent of any wrongdoing on the day in question. And repeatedly, the shooting of the deceased has not been justified by the state. Time and again, disproportionate force used to describe the army's conduct. The lack of investigation in one case was an abject failure of the state. August the 9th, 1971, 600 paratroopers stormed into the Ballamurphy estate seizing alleged IRA members to be imprisoned without trial. The army rolled into all the Catholic areas. 600 paratroopers come in. The people who were to protect us were in fact taking sides against us. Over three days, the soldiers would shoot up to 40 people. The Ballamurphy massacre. 10 were shot dead. The 11th died of a heart attack. The army claims to have shot IRA gunmen. That falsehood fed to the media by a young captain, one Mike Jackson. He'd go on to become head of the British Army. Bally Murphy today at peace. British soldiers long gone from these streets. The wasteland where innocent civilians were gunned down, largely built over today. This one here, it's about the four that were killed here. But uh, Mr. Taggart, Mr. Murphy and yep. Noel Phillips and Mama. Breege Voyle left motherless at 14 along with seven brothers and sisters. And she just loved her children. Life was what it was. She loved the weekend with bingo. She liked the smoke. But that was it. She didn't drink. But truth and justice are very different. Why? Why was our loved ones shot? If they, after all these evidence, why were they shot? Is somebody going to tell us this? Is the British government going to tell us this? Is the soldiers who actually shot our loved ones, are they going to be told they have to tell the truth? Her mother, Joan Connolly, was shot several times through the hand, thigh and face, trying to help another victim. Today, for us all, the truth of Joan Connolly's innocence is finally recognised. Yeah, we've done it. We've done it. The family's cleared our loved one's name. We got their names cleared. The history books aren't being rewrote, they're being ratified. Port of Ferry, a long way from Bala Murphy in many ways, though just 35 miles distant. Father Hugh Mullen would escape the pressures of Bala Murphy's frontline ministry to sail these waters. He saved his cousin from drowning in them. Well, would you want your, your brother to be called a murderer or a gunman? which was said that he was, and that is completely untrue. That August day in 1971, he'd called his brother Patsy in Port of Ferry. He said, don't come up here. He phoned my mother and said, don't come up here because there's a bit of trouble going on here. At 10 o'clock that night, they'd come on RTE news that a priest had been shot in Bellingworth. And uh, I said, well, <laughs> if there was a priest being shot in Bell and Murphy, it would be him. Fifty years is too long for anybody to wait on justice. Today, the coroner described Father Hugh Mullen as a peacemaker. 
Patsy was in court to hear it. Christian justice, I don't need anything else. Yeah. I'm happy. Belfast, Bala Murphy's mural, Father Hugh Mullen shot dead helping a wounded man. Derry, Bogside's mural, Father Edward Daly on Bloody Sunday helping a wounded man. Two massacres, one regiment, six months apart. Coincidence? Many doubt that. But today, the truth officially recognized for Bala Murphy as it has been for Bloody Sunday. Justice is for another day. So clearly, therefore, strong and obvious parallels between what happened here in Bala Murphy in 1971 and what happened, of course, in the bog side in Derry just six months later in January 1972. So in that regard, uh, we're joined now by John Teggett of the Bala Murphy family's campaign for truth and justice and also by Mickey McKinney from the Bloody Sunday's campaign. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us. I'll ask you both the same question to kick off, but John, to you first. There will be many people who will say, these were young lads just obeying orders in the British Army. They didn't ask to be in Bala Murphy that day. They're not the people who should be in the dock. Prosecutions, it's going nowhere. Well, for, for a start, the, the, you had the parachute regiment in Belfast that day. Parachute regiment is an elite sh uh, combat force. It shouldn't have been on the ground. And, and, and any, any city in, in, in Great Britain and certainly shouldn't have been on the ground in Bala Murphy where we're shooting innocent civilians. Prosecutions. Uh, and we're, to we're talking about uh, an amnesty, for, uh, and this is what, what, what they're trying, trying to bring forward uh, for, for ourselves. An example of why there should be prosecutions, why there should not be an amnesty, is well, today well, 10 innocent civilians were declared entirely innocent by the judge in Belfast today. But let me put the words to you, Mickey. McKinney. I mean, South Africa famously was a divided and, and a, an apartheid society. They had their Sharpeville massacre, of course. Nelson Mandela famously said, let bygones be bygones. You've got the truth in, in Derry as well as you have here in Belfast today. Isn't that enough? No, it's not enough, no. I think it's right that these people must face justice. Uh, my brother's life and the life of every people who were murdered in Bloody Sunday and here in Brian Murphy, their lives are, are worth something. There must be accountability. There must be accountability. These people must be brought to book. But people talk of truth and justice. Obviously, your campaigns have been based around those two words. There's the other phrase, uh, uh, John Taggart, truth and reconciliation. How does pursuing prosecutions work with reconciliation? And goodness me, we're a generation into peace now in Northern Ireland. Well. The, day, the, the, the families aren't talking about the prosecutions today. The, the families want to focus on what happened today. Now, for all these years, officially my father was supposed to be a gunman, and all the other Africans come in on women, including the, the parish priest. So what they, they were all vindicated. They were all told they were innocent. I, I, I would say I appeal to anybody who's, who's watching your programme and it. If, if, if you had the powers in any city, Manchester, uh, Berkshire, anywhere, Man, no matter where it would be, would the powers, and if they set innocent civilians on the ground, would them families sitting in the home of day, would they not ask the questions? Would they not ask for a investigation? Sure. Would, would they not be asking for prosecutions? I would ask them that question, and, and I know what the answer would be. They'd, they'd be back in uh, exactly what I'm saying today. Right. Um, Mickey, you had a long struggle too uh, in Derry there for the truth, just the truth. Just in a few words, why is that so important? Well, back in 72, the British government and the British Army told lies about, about their actions on Bloody Sunday. They put the lie around the world saying the people who they murdered that day and wounded were gunmen and aid bombers. And they left the families with a grief of loss and the grief of the, the stigma that was put on their relatives which is totally untrue. And 50 years later, the British government are now saying, let these soldiers go. It was a long time ago. They were young men. What about the families? What about my brother? What about everybody else who died that day? Right. You know, you can't balance it. Right. You can't John, balance just it like a few that. words. We're running short of time. But today, a huge landmark. Today was a landmark. It was a day for truth and justice. Our families. Our family members, all the victims of Bala Murray, were vindicated. They're declared innocent. It's, it, it gives an example of what can be done by other 
through campaigners and this is an example of why there should never ever be an amnesty for well, anyone. We'll have to leave it there, last gentlemen. Thank you both very much indeed. We're joined now by Sir Richard Dunnett, who was, of course, head of the British Army 2006 to 2009. General Sir Richard Dunnett, um, thanks for being with us. The government's hinting about some kind of action. In your view, what should the government now do? Well, I'm afraid before we comment on that, let me say first and foremost that um, my heartfelt sympathy goes out to the families of the 10 whose uh, inquest findings were handed down by uh, the judge today. It's a tragedy that it's taken 50 years for the truth to be unearthed on these killings. But your question, to answer that, um, I think that there are no good options here at all. An amnesty is not the answer. A least worst option that the government is considering is a qualified statute of limitations that would mean that events that took place before the Good Friday Agreement was signed in April 1998 would not be subject to subsequent prosecutions. Now, you might say that's not fair, yeah, but, but that, it would but, apply but, but, equally. Forgive, forgive me, but that is, that is semantics at the end of the day. That amounts to an amnesty in the minds of, uh, of people here in Ballam Murphy and, and in, in the minds of most people, does it not? Well, I was just going on to say, this would apply to civilians and to military. And don't forget, there are many military families who also need to know what happened. But the point of not having prosecutions uh, asked for events that took place before 1998 was that mean without the threat of prosecution, there's much more likely to get witnesses to come forward to say what happened. And I think families have a right to know what happened. And the best way to get to the truth is to remove the threat of prosecution. Look at the case last week of soldiers A and C that collapsed in the Belfast court. The evidence was inadmissible. And I'm afraid 50 years on, we will have case after case that collapses through inadmissible evidence. Much better not to prosecute, right. but to try and open up a dialogue to find out what happened. I'd like to know what happened to what? my soldier who was shot in 1973. Wait a minute. Who was shot in 1973 in the back. I don't know. His family doesn't know. We all have a right to know what's happened to our loved ones and our comrades and those who serve with us, particularly those who live in let Belfast me, and London. Let, let me, let me I recognise that. This. Of course. Let me ask you this. David Cameron famously told Parliament that Bloody Sunday was unjustified and unjustifiable and then apologised outright for it. Bearing in mind what we now know today about Bala Murphy, should Boris Johnson do the same? Well, I'm not Boris Johnson, but I think he would be very wise to consider doing that. And I think the circumstances of Bala Murphy and Bloody Sunday are very similar. So, like you, I wait with interest to see what the response of the Prime Minister and the Ministry of Defence is. Right. You'll have to give me a fight against the noise of a cavalcade here. But is there not also, I confess from your perspective, the sheer difficulty in um, achieving any kinds of prosecution simply because it's so long, people's memories are at fault, and indeed the quality and calibre of the evidence is no longer existent? In short, a coroner's court is one thing, a crown court quite another. Well, I, I mean, that's the whole point. 50 years ago, 50 years is a very long time. I, mean, I was in Belfast in August 1971. I'm 70 now. Um, there are people much older than me. Memories fail. And I think the chance of getting prosecutions is very, very slim. So forego the chance of prosecutions for any event before 1998. And then there is a chance of getting a dialogue which could lead to a degree of truth and reconciliation and families, whether civilian or military, knowing what happened to their loved ones. I think that's a reasonable, I've described it as the least worst case, but I think it is a reasonable least worst case to pursue. And I think that's what the government's got in mind. General, just very briefly, a few words. What, what's your hunch? What do you think the government will do? I think they'll do what I've just said. I think they will examine whether uh, a, a qualified statute of limitations not to prosecute anybody, be it loyalist, nationalist, um, civilian population or military, for events that took place before the Good Friday Agreement was signed in April 1998. It's not ideal. I've called it a least worst solution. But if we want to try and pursue the pursuit of truth to try and bring closure for more families, I think that is the best way to go forward. I say again, it's a least worst fake case, but probably the best thing to do. OK, least worst option. General Sir Richard Dunnett, thanks very much for being with us.
That's pretty much all from Banner Murphy tonight. But before I leave, just a quick reminder that the, uh, uh, the BAFTA uh, nominated documentary, feature length documentary on Banner Murphy is being reshown tomorrow night on Channel 4, 5 past 11. That's 5 past 11 here on Channel 4 from Banner Murphy. Back to you in London. Downing Street said tonight that Boris Johnson has apologised unreservedly on behalf of the UK government for the events that took place in Ballymurphy in West Belfast in 1971 when 10 people were killed in the wake of an operation by the British Army. Yesterday, the families of those who died won a 50-year fight to clear their names when a coroner ruled they had been entirely innocent. Our island correspondent Emma Vardy is at Stormont for us now. Emma. Well, those verdicts by the coroner yesterday, all of those findings provided a huge sense of vindication for the families of the victims here. It was a big moment for Northern Ireland. Their loved ones' names were publicly cleared uh, and the coroner found that in many cases the soldiers used disproportionate force. And almost immediately after that uh, moment yesterday, there were calls for an official apology. Uh, Sinn Féin's Michelle O'Neill saying she was pressing the Prime Minister to say sorry. Now, what we understand has happened today is that there was this virtual meeting uh, between the first and deputy first ministers of Northern Ireland and Boris Johnson and we usually get a readout from 10 Downing Street as a result of these conversations a summary of what was said and in that we are told that the Prime Minister uh, did apologize the readout says uh, that he apologized unreservedly for the events that took place and the huge anguish that the lengthy pursuit of truth has caused the families of those killed but there's been a rather underwhelmed response to that here in Northern Ireland. The initial reaction from families of the Bally Murphy victims is that they would have rather had an apology more directly to them rather than in a private phone call uh, with political leaders. They certainly don't see it as a public apology. We also get the same sense from Sinn Féin too, that they certainly don't see this uh, as an official apology as such. And such was the scale of the tragedy in Bally Murphy and that the conclusive findings uh, of the coroner yesterday that the victims victims uh, were wholly innocent, you can expect there to be many more calls here in Northern Ireland for Boris Johnson to go much further. Emma Vardy, thank you.